The movie opens up showing harrowing scenes of an empty post-apocalyptic town where all human life has been wiped out and no man or animal can be seen, due to the aftermath of a very drastic and life-altering nuclear disaster. Welcome to Review Recapped. Please help us grow by subscribing and turning on the notifications. It support our efforts a lot. Spoilers ahead. Enjoy. A lonely woman named Anna has figured out how to live her daily life and keep herself safe, from the radioactive contaminants and radiation caused by the nuclear disaster. And thinks she is a lone nuclear apocalypse survivor and lives a simple life. She wears a makeshift plastic coat along with a mask and breathing equipment that she somehow put together herself in order to survive. Every day on her daily walk around she tries to find things she need in the destroyed town. We see she is walking into a destroyed public library and gets upstairs to get some books to read. Once she has gone to several places in the town and collected the items she was looking for she starts walking back home, she's walking completely alone on a big road in the mountains with not even a single living being around her. She has bags of daily life supplies and she is using a trolley to take them with her, after arriving to her home in the hills she's taking off her mask and greeting the only other living being that she knows her pet dog. The dog is very excited to see Anne and is barking for food. Hidden in these mountains is a small valley farm that belonged to Anne's family, we can now see that the farm also has a cow but there's no sign of any other human up until now the farm is in the mountains so it's sheltered from the nuclear radiation and dangerous contaminants that pollute everything in the town. After reaching home she takes a bath and cleans herself up so that even if there's a little radiation on her body it can be washed away. She's shown scrubbing her body vigorously and with a lot of stress, because she's afraid she might get sick from the radiation after cleaning herself she gets into bed and signals her dog to join her. On the bed she's lonely and has only her animals to talk to she's able to survive and keep her animals alive because her farm has a water supply that comes from inside the ground so it is not contaminated by radiation. One day Anne is doing her daily chores along with her dog like she does every day and she's fixing the wires on her fence. She goes into the woods to check some traps she's deployed across the forest ground to catch small animals and use them as food for herself and her dog. As her dog smells blood and fur from one of the traps he follows the scent in the air to catch the animal and Anne starts following him so they can catch the injured animal and slaughter it for food, instead, and makes a startling discovery as walking down the hill onto the road. She sees a very unique and strange looking vehicle that looks like nothing, she's ever seen before, she becomes nervous but she moves forward with caution as she has a gun and her dog for her defense. If anything goes wrong she approaches the vehicle and sees signs of human life. She sees fabric clothes and other scientific equipment which leads her to believe that this is man-made stuff and another human must be nearby. She retreats back into the grass and pulls her dog with her they hide in the safety of the grass and see what is about to happen next. A man wearing a very odd looking white anti-radiation suit approaches the vehicle and starts pulling it like a buggy. As the man is moving along the road he has completely no idea that he is being followed, but Anne is following him from inside the trees with silence and stealth Anne is curious and nervous, she steadily observes as the man starts taking off his suit. He looks very frustrated and as he takes the suit off he's wearing another white space-like garment underneath, the man is clearly very upset because he thinks he is all alone in these mountains and descends down from the woods onto the road and sees that the man is gone again, she follows the man and gets shocked by seeing him bathing in a waterfall stream that comes from the radioactive contaminated town. The man thinks the water is fresh but it is actually that which contains radioactivity, she quickly yells at him to come out of the water. The man gets very frightened because he did not expect any other person to be there, when he sees Anne's hunting rifle the man gets even more scared and grabs his own gun and shoots a bullet in the air. Anne and her dog get scared. The man tells Anne to put down her gun and tell him where she came from, and gets very scared and throws away her gun and tries to explain to the man that the water is toxic, as soon as the man realizes that he jumps out of the water and goes back up to his vehicle he starts vomiting and he tries to give himself an injection, and takes the man to her farm home and then also takes the man's vehicle buggy inside the scientific looking vehicle, she finds pictures of the man with another woman possibly his wife. Once at the house and takes a bucket of fresh ground water and the man gets naked into a kiddie pool and pours the non-toxic fresh water on himself. She gives him a very harsh scrub down with a tough brush. She takes the man inside and gives him a blanket but the man keeps getting sicker and sicker. And is shown feeding him soup. One night Anne comes into the room and Anne sees the man shaking and shivering very badly in his bed. And is worried if the man will recover or if he will die from the radiation. Slowly the man starts to recover and learn things about Anne's simple and rural life. The man is stunned that there's this beautiful area perfectly protected from nuclear contamination. 
As he's recovering he tells him that his name is John Loomis, and that he is an engineer who has walked from a distant government bunker shelter to look for other people. He was all alone and only had his medicines and his equipment in his vehicle. At Anne's farmhouse Loomis starts learning things about her life and how she sustains it while he also starts teaching and things that she doesn't know. Loomis recovers his solidarity and step by step turns out to be important for Anne's unassuming farm life. And tells Loomis about her father and her brother who went out one day to look for other survivors, and bring back to the farm so they can work together to create a good community, but they never returned and she was left alone. Loomis guesses hydropower may be produced from the close by waterfall that almost killed him. He says that utilizing a water will molded from the Burden family church's boards and shafts will help them generate electricity and get the freezers running so they can stock up some food for the winter. Instead of starving and freezing Anne is awkward with this proposition because her dad was a preacher in that church and that church holds great sentimental value for her and her Christian beliefs. Loomis respects her opinion and decides to not seek after the undertaking any further, as their friendship grows so do the tensions between them, one night, while walking out of the bathroom Loomis stops, and looks at Anne's open bedroom door, he starts admiring her as she is so beautiful. However, he snaps out of it in a few seconds and goes to bed. Anne and Loomis develop a closer and closer relationship every day. They are preparing the farmland for crops and preparing for a long comfortable residence at the farmhouse. Since it is only the two of them now and Lord knows how long they will have to live together, they become good friends. There are spats between them every now and then mostly concerning religious beliefs and Loomis has also started drinking. Loomis found alcohol at nearby abandoned stores, and he decides to start drinking and often remains drunk during the middle of the day. Anne and Loomis are good friends but there are also men and women who have not seen other people in a long time. But at the same time he believes they need to focus on survival and initiating a sexual relationship will distract them from that and change things. He says he needs more time to think about it, Soon enough mysterious things start to happen in the house all of a sudden food supplies start going missing and it starts to alert Anne and Loomis. Soon one of them spots a quick moving shadow in the house and they think it is just their imagination, but soon enough they realize that it is an intruder a third survivor has found the farmhouse, he's finally introduced to Anne and Loomis, the man's name is Caleb and he is instantly welcomed into the farmhouse by Anne who thinks she will now have more help with the work and the stockpiling. Food supplies for winter will become even easier now however Loomis and Caleb do not get off on the right foot and from the very start there's resentment shown. Since Caleb is white and Anne is also white, Loomis is now starting to feel like a minority and thinks that Anne and Caleb will become close friends now, he says whites belong with whites which shows that he thinks Anne and Caleb might form a relationship and Loomis will be completely left out. Loomis is becoming very suspicious of Caleb he's starting to question Caleb's backstory and thinks that Caleb has a different mission and different motives. Caleb talks to Anne, and enthusiastically tells her that he shares the same Christian faith, as Anne and that brings the two closer together this further leads Loomis to believe that he's being left behind. However, soon the three settle into their farm lifestyle well enough and Loomis and Caleb also start becoming somewhat frank with each other and start being stable both of them sit together and share stories of the horrifying things. They witnessed in the post-apocalyptic world before finding Anne's farmhouse. They both start relating to each other's stories and tensions between them seem to settle down momentarily during these stories, Loomis decides to share a secret with Anne, he tells her that when he was out there before reaching the valley he had seen a sick child who had been extremely damaged by radiation and the toxic nuclear fumes in the area. He says that the boy was in really bad condition and he was begging to be murdered his condition was so bad that the kid thought death would be better than to stay alive. Loomis reveals the truth that the kid he's talking about was in fact Anne's brother, this is very shocking news to Anne and she becomes emotionally unstable. Later Loomis also confesses to Anne that he could not leave her little brother in such misery so he did as the kid asked him to do. Loomis murdered Anne's brother so he would not have to live a life full of endless suffering pain and bodily damage caused by the toxic nuclear radiation. This incident changes Anne and she starts to think differently and becomes emotionally vulnerable. During this Caleb starts to put pressure on Anne that she must allow Caleb and Loomis to start working on the turbine that they will use the waterfall to generate electricity for the farmhouse. Anne agrees finally, and they start the work to tear down the church that once belonged to Anne's father, so they turn the materials into a hydropowered turbine that will help the trio stay warm and well. Fed in the upcoming harsh and freezing cold winter season since work has started on the turbine. Loomis seems to be in a forgiving mood and he gives in a positive signal that if she wants she can start a romantic relationship with Caleb. Without having to worry. However he still makes negative remarks to Anne and makes it known that he will be hurt and angry on the inside that he's losing Anne to Caleb. 
Loomis knows he has very strong feelings for Anne but he's unclear whether Anne feels the same. Since Anne and Caleb have more things in common he thinks they will be a more suitable couple. Loomis on the inside wants to be with Anne and he loves her. After this the three of them start having a celebration dinner for the work that has started on the hydroelectricity project. During the dinner Loomis drinks heavily and becomes fully intoxicated and is still confused about whether she wants to choose Caleb or Loomis, as her romantic and sexual partner in a heavily drunken state, Loomis confesses in front of Caleb that he loves him very deeply, but he is able to do nothing about it since he's so drunk. And tries to help but he passes out in a bedroom in Anne's home. And wants to spend time with Loomis since she told her that he loved her but to no avail Loomis is fully blacked out due to the overconsumption of alcohol. When Anne fails to wake up Loomis she becomes frustrated and goes with Caleb into the bathroom, right next to the bedroom where Loomis is passed out. Drunk Caleb and Anne starts to make out and unleash the sexual tension that both of them have been holding in their bodies for a very long time. The act of sex is great and it brings great pleasure to both. But they don't know that there are going to be consequences, after Loomis finds out that Anne and Caleb had sex the tensions in between Loomis and Caleb become very bad, Loomis starts resenting Caleb very badly but still stays composed because they have to finish the hydroelectricity project. Together the turbine has been built and it is finally time to place it at the top of the toxic waterfall so the turbine can spin with high speed and generate enough electricity to run the farmhouse. Caleb is wearing the heavy radiation suit as he's using a rope to climb up the side of the waterfall. The rocks are very slippery and there are several moments where Caleb slips very badly and almost falls down. The turbine is in place now but Caleb is still slipping and if Loomis tries to help they will both fall down in the toxic lake and die. During the slip Caleb knows what is best to do Caleb and Loomis look at each other in the eyes as Caleb is hanging loosely off the edge of the cliff. Loomis and Caleb are both shown to be holding the rope as Caleb is dangling the scene ends and Loomis comes back to the farmhouse all alone Caleb is nowhere to be seen. When Loomis returns to the farmhouse and has no clue what has happened at the waterfall and apologizes to Loomis about the sexual incident but she wishes to maintain her relationship with Caleb. Loomis tells him that Caleb has left the farmhouse to look for other livable places and other survivors. Anne is completely brokenhearted to hear this news she runs and runs in all directions to look for Caleb but she is not able to find him anywhere, she becomes completely taken over by sadness and goes into a complete state of shock and silence. The farmhouse light comes back on and sees that Loomis moved the church organ and pews into the barn, she starts to play a hymn on the organ. She looks at Loomis in a very distrustful way as the movie ends. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching.